So the pros of dog castration, no more unwanted matings for obvious reasons. Okay, so uh, if they should be humping or tying or even wanting the, the need to hump, um, there wouldn't be any unwanted matings. I've certainly seen castrated dogs continue humping. So that's not uncommon. Okay, uh, but obviously no more puppies despite humping. So it's all good. Reduce risk of prostate issues. Okay, so basically the um, prostate is very, very closely linked to the connection between the bladder and the penis. Okay, and uh, there'll be some pictures later I'll show you exactly uh, where the prostate is and what it looks like and things like that. But uh, certainly reduce risk of prostate issues. And um, I'll come back to that in a bit. No risk of testicular cancer. No more testicle, no testicular cancer. Okay. <laughs> So that is the most clear, obvious thing. Having said that, the percentage of testicular cancer is 2%. So it's not as though it is a very, very high percentage. So it is 2%. So, you know, go figure which one is better. Elimina elimination of unwanted behavior influenced by male hormones. Okay, the last four words is very, very important. Okay, elimination of unwanted behavior influenced by male hormones. Obviously, if the male hormones is not influencing the behavior, castrating will not help. Okay, so when does that happen? So that is where we talk about if they are much older, if they're three years old and tired and it's now being aggressive and humping and everything, it well may not even be the hormones anymore, it could be a learned behavior. So castration at that point of time, I would certainly be giving the, uh, not warning, but you know, the suggestion that it may not achieve the result that you want to achieve but we're talking about castration for other reasons. It may, it may, I'm not saying it wouldn't, okay, uh, but it may not. Okay, so the cons to dog castration would be um, no more breeding. So I had this owner who wanted to breed from his dog after he was being castrated because it was now much nicer and better. I'm like, you didn't understand it when <laughs> we said that we were removing the testicles, but okay, you're not reverse it like humans. In humans, yes, that's vasectomy, but not in dogs. So yeah, so no more breeding. So it is a one-way ticket. It sounds silly, but <laughs> we get it. <laughs> General aesthetic. I know, right? It's like, oh, that's a good point. Do you know in America, only in America, they, you can put in prosthetics. Yeah, they have like Yeah, and you can choose the size of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, but, and you can choose the size of it. That's, that, that's the beauty of it. It's like, you can put in prosthetics with the size difference. But hey, there you go. Only in America. But general anesthetic risks, just like any sort of anesthetics, um, any anesthetics has its own risk. And certainly if, even for young animals, I don't think any vet will ever say there's no risk to anesthetic. The safest anesthesia is no anesthesia. And a shorter anesthesia is safer than a longer anesthesia. That's a general rule of thumb. And this goes across ages, illness, everything. Yep. Question mark code change. Okay, so certainly people have they discussed about uh, you're removing the testicle, so there's no more influence of um, testosterone, and the code does rely on a multitude, not just one, multitude of hormones. So taking away one completely, uh, people have reported code change. And from my experience, what the report is that the code gets a little bit more curly, a little more fluffy. I see, more yeah, a, a bit more so woolly, uh, almost thin, uh, much thinner hair, mm. so to speak. <laughs> so that's uh, one. Um, in my experience as well, that is purely cosmetic. It doesn't really go down to skin disease for that. So that's uh, certainly not good for crafts. If it's going to be a show dog. <laughs> S certainly, yeah. That's that 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 would be one reason. I'm not sure whether that's the entire reason, but that, that certainly is one reason why that once you get castrated and people have discussed. And usually, it is without something random as well. It's, it it makes more sense. It is all the long coat dogs that become quite curly, because all the short coat you probably won't see a difference. I yeah. see a lot of spaniels. Mm, yeah. Changes in the spaniels. Sure. Yeah, because you know the way the hair flows yeah. for that. Um, makes aggression worse. Okay, this is also quite contentious as well uh, between behaviorists and vets. Um, so vets are saying testosterone makes aggression, uh, is what causes aggression in the first place. Behaviorists, they are going along the lines of saying that uh, sometimes the dog is confident with the testosterone. If you take that away, they become more nervous, they become more frightened. So this is 
you know, it's still out there and as long as everybody makes an informed decision and that's where we sort of go into whether we should do it or not and the risk and the pros and cons that we take. I don't believe there's a right answer to it, which is why I put a question mark there, including being a vet. Yeah. Uh, but that is something that we always sort of discuss with behaviorists. It's like they come here biting, then the vet would go, Yeah, let's get it castrated. And the behaviorists are like, But I'm working with it, <laughs> hang on. So it's always that contentious and uh, certainly, you know, all we are interested in, when I say we, both behaviorists and the vets, is in the right outcome, in the right result. So with all the best intentions, it's just that the school of thought may be slightly different. And it may be different from dog to dog, because some dogs certainly benefit from it, and some dogs didn't. And maybe it's good to point out at this point of time that um, that is where sometimes they talk about chemical castration, whereby they inject an implant called suprilorin, and that can literally is an anti-testosterone implant uh, and we can see from the effect once you remove the effects of testosterone what does the dog do and that could be one way of sort of uh, testing it out without removing the testicles and make it one way ticket yeah. so let's talk a little bit about prostate issues. Okay, so when I, when I say re reduced risk of prostate issues, the prostate, like I say, is very, very closely linked to the testicles. And it is not, um, it, it is not unusual, or rather it, it, it wouldn't, it, it, it's not uh, too strange to, to understand that the prostate has a lot of influence, or rather the testicles has a lot of influence on the prostate in terms of the hormones and things like that. Okay, so one big thing is that there is uh, these two particular prostate conditions that happen. One is uh, BPH or benign prostate uh, prostatic hypertrophy um, and the other one is uh, actually prostate cancer. So we know BPH, benign prostate hypertrophy, it is really really directly influenced by testosterone because if the animal has that, you reduce, you, you castrate them, it goes back down to size again. So that really is a, a non-problem. Uh, it is purely hormonal influence. Whereas a cancer is cancer. It is a bit of everything inclusive, genetic, environmental factors, what they eat, what they're exposed to, and certainly the influence of testosterone as well. And I'll describe that in a bit more detail in a bit. Okay, so let's talk about cryptorchid. So as I mentioned before, crypt means hidden, or orchid means uh, testicle, so it's a hidden testicle. And um, it's usually single or bilateral cryptorchid, which means that single means you can feel one testicle, one is hiding. Bilateral cryptorchid means both are hiding, so you don't feel any testicles at all. Okay, um, and like I said, it's extremely rare for it to be monarchid and even more rare to be polyorchid. That's usually one of those things that somebody write a paper and publish it for the next 20 years and nobody else sees it. But um, cryptorchid is fairly common. It's an undescended testicle, more prone to development tumor. There is a reason why the testicles are outside of the body. Okay, so basically, for the physiology in the testicles itself to produce sperm, to, to, to produce testosterone, the function of it, it needs to be a lower body temperature compared to the core temperature. That's why it's outside the body rather than inside in the middle, uh, in the hot body, it's outside where it's cooler. Then that can actually uh, allow its normal function. If it is in the body with the increased temperature, it is that increased temperature that increases the risk of that particular uh, testicle that's in the body in the high temperature to become a tumor. Okay, and um, yeah, so that's why vets, we will always say that, look, it's a cryptorchid, we have to go and look for the other one because we don't just castrate one and hope for the best. <laughs> because some owners have said, why well, do you just castrate the one that you can see and hope for the best? I'm like, it doesn't change anything. <laughs> like, what are you trying to, what, what, what is what is the objective you're trying to do when castrating? You're trying to stop this dog from mating, having viable pups. One instead there can still cause that. You're trying to reduce uh, uh, testosterone for unwanted behavior. The testicle inside can still do that. <laughs> so it doesn't make sense. So we always have to look inside there. Yeah. Um, if you take a look over here, we have got the kidneys, the ureters coming down to the bladder. So this is where it forms the urine, comes down to the bladder. That's where it stores the urine. Okay. And this is the uh, bladder neck. This yellow color thing is the prostate coming down right down to the urethra coming out to the bulbous gland, coming to the penis. Okay, so you see this little swing over here. Testicles are usually located here. So this is the abdomen. Okay, this is a very simplified picture, but this is the abdomen over here. And there is an inguinal canal 
over here. So usually, uh, embryology, okay, it will be over here. The testicles will be starting to develop here, then they will travel down until they're here, then stay wet, yeah. <clears throat> For whatever reason during embryology, it doesn't travel down. So it can either stay in the abdomen, literally, or halfway through the canal, okay? Um, there isn't really, in my experience anyway, there isn't really uh, which one is more common. I think they're just as common. So, and what happens is that sometimes when we are feeling for the testicle, then you'll feel left and right of the penis, and you can feel it over there. And that's because it is in the inguinal canal. So that is quite lucky. It's not down, but it's just there. So it's quite easy to remove. Uh, but if it is an abdomen, it literally is an abdomen. So you have to go and look for it. And there's a whole different ball game. Yeah? Literally. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> I told you there'd be jokes. <laughs> okay, so that's what it looks like. Okay? Testicle over here. The left testicle in the scrotum. Okay, the right testicle in the inguinal canal. Random fact, it usually is a right that is cryptocket if there's only one. Obviously, there's both, it's both. I think it's embryology. The way the left goes down first, then the right follows. And the right don't follow all the way, then the right gets stuck halfway. But usually, in my experience, I'm always taking out the right one. Yeah, then the left side. But hey, there we go, fun fact. <laughs> um, <laughs> so sometimes when they lie down, ready to be, uh, ready to be anesthetized, then you can feel it. Then you can actually see it and, and you can feel it. There's, oh, is there? Because sometimes when they're standing up, when they're still conscious, it is, uh, they're actually quite tense or they just sort of suck it in or you, you just can't feel it, not as obvious. So we never really commit to it to say that um, it is definitely abdominal because we cannot feel it. So we always give ourselves, being that's typical, like lawyers, no. <laughs> A little bit of leeway is it. We may get lucky when it's lying down and we just relax everything, then the testicle may just pop out to the surface, like so then it's very easy. Castration, one incision here, another one over here. So just slightly more time because there's two, two incisions, but at least you don't have to look for it. It's just there. Yeah, so sometimes you can see that. So this one, interestingly, one castration site here possibly felt something over here. <laughs> so did one here. Actually, no, it's just a bit of fats. <laughs> so they had to go in the end <laughs> to look for the other one. Okay, so it does happen. It does happen. I mean, no, nobody's perfect. You're feeling for a bump. And it's like, that feels like a bump. What are you going to do as a vet? <laughs> you know, are you going to explore that bump? Or are you going to go straight in the abdomen saying that that is fat? How brave are you? <laughs> so you just have to go and explore it. Or, or you can stop putting ultrasound and all the sort of things. It's like, okay, um, where, where does it stop? So the simplest way is take a look and suddenly if it's inguinal fat, okay, it's not testicle, close it up again. And go inside it because the testicle can be quite small, can be very, very small. Like the normal one is this size, a cryptocyte because it's not developed properly before it became a cancer or tumor, it can be like a proper one third the size. It's just a little blip, it's just a little bump, and they're usually much, much smaller. It's not easy to find. And certainly, I must have uh, I, put, I put my hands up, you know, I felt a lump there before, and I was speaking to another, my senior vet. I was like, okay, there's a lump there. What do I do? I think that might be it. And I said, then he was like, yeah try it, but it was actually the, just a fat. So we had to close everything up again. Then we went into the abdomen and found the other one there. But what's the alternative? Go straight into there. <laughs> so it's tricky, it's tricky. So yeah, so I can totally appreciate and sympathize with this particular case, with this vet over here. <laughs> yeah. So what we do now is that if it's an abdomen, okay, we do keyhole, okay? Because comparatively, instead of this long wound over here, which you have to, to open up to find out where it is, Okay, when we, when we use keyhole, we can actually go through with one little tiny port of a five millimeter hole, okay? So what happens is that, if you can imagine, you put in the port, okay, and you look for the testicles, you see the testicles is just over here. Then you bring the testicle out, then when you lift the testicle up towards the skin, then you can make an incision on the skin and pop the testicle up. And then you can take it out, castrate it, and pop it back in again, rather than making one big, um, uh, sort of an incision. So uh, that is sort of a modern technology and certainly uh, because we do keyhole, we've done quite a few of this before, it just, it's, it's just less traumatic on the dog having a big wound, so to speak. And um, this is sort of what you see inside there. So you can see the testicle. So if the head is this side and we're looking to the back side, you see what I mean? An inguinal canal goes into uh, 
um, the back of the body. So, so if this dog is sort of lying, almost coming out towards you, and now we're looking at the back over here, and that's where you look for the inguinal canal, and that's usually where the testicle is. So it's fairly straightforward, it's fairly simple. It certainly beats opening up the whole dog to search through everything really to look for that little testicle.